Welcome to the faithful to church today. This is uh, Easter weekend, isn't it, for most of the Christian world. In Adventist, we don't traditionally celebrate Easter, but we do need to take advantage of the season because the idea behind Easter is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Of course, many other groups add all kinds of stuff to it that has nothing to do with Christianity or nothing to do with Christ. But we know a better way. So I'm just taking, I used to always love it when I was a kid, going to church on Easter Sunday. People's hearts were full. Church was more full, too. And I just thought, wow, God's doing something here, you know. And then I became a Seventh-day Adventist, and I thought, wow, God's really doing something. He's, he's, he's helped me to understand Scripture. And uh, I wonder what happened with the old holidays and things, you know. Um, we don't have a doctrine that eschews them, but it also, you know, because different evidence have different opinions, you know, whether they celebrate Christmas or not, whether they celebrate Easter or not. And we're not against it nor for it, but like the Old Testament feasts, which we also no longer celebrate. You know, Ellen White did say we should celebrate a Feast of Tabernacles. We should celebrate things like that. And so I believe God would interact with people where they are. And that's what we have to do as well. And so let's use this season to share our belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and also in the further message, the three angels' message, the message of his soon return. Because today, that's the one that does make the difference, isn't it? And that's what most of Christianity doesn't know. They're still looking to the holy place. They don't realize they're looking to the holy place, but they're still looking to the holy place as if Jesus will still intercede from them just to deliver them from their daily sins, not to get them ready for heaven necessarily. And most of them are still looking to when you die, you go straight to heaven, you see. So there's no urgency for the coming of Christ. But we know as Seventh-day Adventists that God closed the door to the holy place in 1844 and opened a door that no man can shut, as it says in Revelation, to the most holy place. And what does that mean for us? It means that our message is the important, the most important message in the world today. So anything else you preach or teach, including social justice for some who really get into that, that's not the most important message. Social justice is important. Delivering the poor and needy is important, but that's not the most important message. If you don't have the three angels' message mixed into it, then it's not the most important message. God is holding us accountable that in all our interactions with humanity, we will teach that the judgment hour has come, that it's important to know that, and that you want to be in this judgment. It's the judgment of the saints. And then when Jesus finishes this judgment, probation will close on earth, and he will soon come. He will soon appear. So with that in mind, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm doing the origins, and I'm trying to work it out so we can have it here too. That includes Friday night and Sabbath afternoon. That means someone has to be here to operate the computer or the TV to show it here. Otherwise, you can watch it at home on Zoom. And I think it might be on YouTube too, but it'll definitely be on Zoom. The same Zoom link we use for the Griffin Church, I'm using the same, same link. And I'm looking to that because here we have no children, obviously. No children. Up there we have children. And using those children to invite their friends, and it's working. People are coming to church up there. Kids are coming to church because their friends are inviting them, and so they're going to come to these origins meetings as well. Kids who go to public school and hear teachings on evolution are going to come hear a different story. And if you read my email, you know that our worldview, your worldview, people don't understand it, the great controversy worldview. They don't understand a true biblical worldview, even most Christians. So it's our worldview that when we talk to people, we have to understand why they don't always want to listen to us or have a hard time. Because they have a different worldview. And their worldview does not include keeping the Sabbath. It does not include Jesus coming again, like he says. So there's 
difficulties in conversation, but this Origins series, this is what convinced me when I was young. These kind of messages that I could trust the Bible, including the creation account. If you get Christians to trust the creation account, and I don't believe most Christians do. I think most Christians accept the Easter story, but they don't accept the creation story. You know, they think it's some type of myth or some type of good story. But once you get them to accept that, everything changes. Their worldview starts to change. And that's what we're looking to do. So I really believe these origins meetings are a good bridge builder for us. Invite your children to have them invite their friends, invite your grandchildren. Um, I believe it's going to be successful up there. I believe God's going to work. But I'm trying to figure out how we can do it here. Who would y'all invite? Because you're the choir. You know, we're preaching to the choir all the time. Who would you all invite? That's what I'm putting in your head right now. How would you get your kids or grandkids or children, young people, teenagers, even young adults into this church so we could do the same meeting here live that I'm doing up there? Here it's only going to be through Zoom, but we could do it live here if we have the people. And I don't want to just spend money and send out mailings unless... We know that we have people we can invite. So be praying about this. Father in heaven, as we open the service, that's what we're praying about. Show us how to find ways to invite young people here in the future, like we're doing up at Griffin right now, for these kind of meetings so their minds can be open to the worldview that you have in the Bible so they can accept your word wholeheartedly and so they would want to keep your Sabbath and become Seventh-day Adventists. That's the purpose of our worship today, Lord. We're here to glorify your name, but we're also here to learn our mission to spread this word. And Lord, we're old, we're feeble. We don't have connections to young people so easily. So help us to pray that you will show us answers to how we can. Now bless us in this service today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again. Happy Sabbath. This morning, I will call to worship be hymn number 701. Shout joyful to the Lord. You know, the Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the men. When you find it, let me know this morning. Although we don't have too many people here this morning, but we're going to have a hallelujah time this morning. That's right. We're going to have a hallelujah time. But the Bible said, well, there's two or more in his name. He will be in the midst. So this morning, I'm sure that he's in the midst of all of us this morning. Amen. I will do the light reading and you will do the dark. Shout joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joy for singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his sheep people and the sheep of his pasture enter his grace enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise give thanks to him bless his name for the lord is good his, his loving love kindness is, is everlasting, everlasting and, and his, his faithfulness, faithfulness to all, to all generations. generations amen amen Sir. open the hand will be hymn number 343 i will sing of my redeemer I will sing of my Redeemer as one dress love to me on the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt and made me free. I will see, tell the wondrous story how my lost 
this day to save in his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my pardon paid the debt and made me free i will sing of my redeemer and his heavenly love to me he from death to life hath brought me son of god with him to be sing it out sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my pardon paid the debt and made me free amen you be seated i'll invite jeff up here to give the offering appeal all right this is the local church budget love without boundaries john three seventeen. for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but he saved the world through him we worship through regular and systematic giving because God gave us an example of love without boundaries. John 3.17 declares the nature and the scope of the mission of the Son. Jesus came to bring salvation. He brought it to the whole world. Following in the footsteps of Jesus means embracing a universal mission. Among other things, the title of offerings, plan, provides us with an opportunity to participate in a global mission. The story is told of a pastor who was ministering a city church. This large, well-off congregation was known for its generosity. They were keen to invest in the regular upgrading of their church facilities. Unfortunately, sometimes at the expense of participating in a regular offering. Interest, in, interestingly, the pastor refrained from educating his members about the danger of self-serving generosity and the importance of supporting the global church family. Pastoring a church with the best facilities was even his source of pride and salvation. After some years, the conference transferred him to a different and less affluent locality. He quickly understood the consequences of the narrow vision of mission. How long is our vision of God's mission? We are saved because God emptied heaven and sent Jesus to our world. And at some point, the church mobilized resources to send a missionary to our home, own, your home country or region. With Jesus as our model, would you like to be an instrument of love to all people? As we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, we have another opportunity to give globally. This is a prayer. Lord, love, your love has no boundaries. That's why we are saved. We praise your name. Through our giving, help us to express the same kind of love for all humanity. Amen. Amen. We thank Deacon Stinchcomb for that offering. You know, it's just amazing. It's a good thing that God love had no boundaries. God love having them boundaries. We wouldn't be here today. Amen. We wouldn't be here today, but just thanks God for God. Amen. This morning, the pastoral prayer. And this morning, we just lift the people up that we just desire. Uh, just lift whatever we feel on our heart this morning. You know, just lift them up. Anyone have a prayer this morning? 
Brother Deacon Stench, come on. Uh, remember my niece, Megan? She says she's going to join Billy Church. That would be a good thing. Amen, amen. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good thing, you know, to serve, you know. So that would be a good thing, you know. You know, you know, we just pray that whatever the Lord put on her mind, that she would do it. Yes, sir. Amen. And that she'd be successful in doing whatever God put on her heart this morning and her mind. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Sister Bonnie? Amen. Amen. Sister Joyce? I ask a prayer for her and Jerry, and especially for Haley and AJ at this time. Amen. Anyone else? Tootie? Uh, continue prayer for our children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, from the youngest to the oldest, adult. Um, and I have a praise. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Since I am now the oldest in my mother's family line, everyone has passed, her siblings, even the ones that are, that was closest to my age. Well, in that line, there are some children that her siblings have. So during the years and the course of time, everybody goes their own way and you don't, you know, associate with them. So I took it upon myself to call um, one of the, the, the um, adult children in their thirties. And I said, you know, when I have your address, I want to send a booklet to you. And it's it's a morning devotional that was written. 1963, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I said, it's a religious book. And so I was waiting for him to say, I don't want to hear anything about that. So he just, you know, just said, just didn't really commit. And then about maybe five, seven days later, I get a text. And he's texting his address and a picture of he and his wife. Mm -hmm. And I said, Wow, Amen. Jesus, I said, because I was afraid, you know, I was like holding back. And so then I text him a picture of me and, 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 and my son, Deuce, and he said, you know, you look just like my mother. And I was like, no, I really don't, but I didn't say that to him. But I was thanking the Lord that he's letting an opening come when mm -hmm. I was afraid. Amen. I didn't let go and let God, but at that moment, I let go and let God. Amen. It's all the time. You know, we try to hold on to self, but we have to let go of self. Just let God. If we just let God, things would be 100% better. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Ryan, do you have, Ryan, do you have a prayer? Let's pray for uh, my uh, sister and my mom. Okay. All right. Family. Anyone else? Pray for Tracy. Mm -hmm. She's also got some uh, hay fever or something going on. It's gone down into the lungs a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh. We definitely remember her this morning. Also this morning, let's not forget active military personnel and all the veterans and that family. Also this morning, we're going to continue to remember the people in Ukraine, you know, the war is still going on over there. They're still fighting bloodshed. And let's continue to remember the, the family over there, all, especially the one in always belief. Some of the Adventist people over there. Just, just remember all the people Amen. on both sides, you know, because life is life. Because how we look at it, life is a life. And God love all of us. Also this morning, we we'll to remember Miss B, Brother Gus, our missing member, Sister Yosha Bell. We remember Jeannie and also Steve. We just remember all of them this morning. This morning. Yes. Also, this morning come to my mind there was somebody we was asking about about two weeks ago, and I couldn't figure who she was. It was Cecil, the one that in Barnesville. 
You know what? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. He's like George Caesar. So we don't remember her this moment. We haven't heard from her. I think two that heard from her for one for once. But let's remember her in our prayer this morning. Also this morning, I want to remember the bereaved family, the Hill family. One of my classmates, brother passed, so the Hills, we're going to remember them this morning in our prayer. I know that we have unspoken prayer. Maybe we bow over here in prayer this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I will come before you this morning, Lord. We come to you, Father, with open arms and open heart, Lord. Right now, Father, you know what we need. Father, I really don't have to call no name. You already know. But, Father, just showing our gratitude toward you, Father. We just don't call the name this morning. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless the stench gone from the Lord. Amen. Especially Megan, Lord, and Brother Steve, Lord. Brother Jeff, the whole family, Lord, he says she's thinking about joining the military, Father. If you see that military is for her, Lord, we ask you to just guide her mind and go out her home, Lord, and keep her safe. Father, we ask you to continue to bless, bless Sister Bonnie this morning. Also, Lord, continue to give travel mercy for her children. They're all traveling this morning. Just give them safety and travel mercy, Father, that they, that they will return back home this morning. Also, Father, continue to bless Joyce this morning and her family also, Lord. Continue to bless Jean and Jerry and also Haley and their family, Father. We just ask you, Father, you know what they need. You know what we need also, Lord. Father, continue to bless our children and grandchildren, Father, and just continue to bless all <coughs> this morning. Tuda had a praise this morning about some of her siblings. She's the only one in her siblings now, Father, in the family line. Father, we ask you just continue to bless her, Father, and lead her to pass away of righteousness, Lord. Continue to bless Ryan family this morning, his sisters, mother, and <coughs> his father this morning, Lord. Keep them safe. Lord, we ask you to bless Sister Benton, Brother Gus, bless Sister Yosha Bell, Sister Jeannie, Lord, all our mission members that is not here this morning, Father. Father, go by there and touch our Pastor Wild, trace the Lord, and just heal her what you need, Father. We ask you, Father, to bless our pastor, give him strength also, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless the active military personnel and their family also, Lord. Bless the veteran also, Lord. Right now, Father, all that we have missed, Lord, we ask you just bless them. Give them strength and mercy for what they need, Lord. All of these blessings we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So this is a couple of scripture songs that you can help sing with me. It's Micah 6, 8 and Isaiah 40, verse 11. You know Micah 6, 8, he has showed thee, O man, what is good. And Isaiah 40, verse 11 is, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Maybe you know that one too. I'll sing them both through a couple times. So by the second time, you join me, okay? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. He hath shown the old man what is good, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, require of thee, but to do justly and to love of mercy and to walk Humbly with thy God. And when you're teaching your kids, you end with Micah 6, 8. I just realized, Ryan, I don't think I have this mic on. Let me turn it on. Now it's... You were turning it up, weren't you? Because you just should have known I didn't have it on. Put it back down. Down. It's still down. All right, there we go. The next song, He Shall Feed His Flock Like a Shepherd. Isaiah 40, 11. 
He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Isaiah 40, verse 11. You ready to sing it with me now? He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Isaiah 40, verse 11. Thank you for helping me with that. So you receive an email from me Tuesday, like I sent out at midweek, if you read it. And part of that you'll hear today. This is a short sermon, believe it or not. It's called From Easter to Origins, What Do You Believe? And I printed it out on paper, though I wrote this on my blog. And this little picture here you probably can't see too well, but it's a mountainous picture with birds flying the sun coming up, and it says, Pastor Dean, living the faith of Jesus, because that's my vision, my motto. You know, that I take that verse from Revelation 14, 12, where here are those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Let me move this a little bit out of the way and do another couple other moves here. Put this one down here and pick up you all. Yeah. And... Uh, When you look at mission and we look at vision, a church should have a mission, a church should have a vision. And a mission is an action that you are carrying out so that you can achieve your vision. The vision is like the dream, but it's more than a dream because a vision implies you're gonna make the dream real. So think of the faith of Jesus from that verse, Revelation 14, 12. Think of the faith of Jesus. And Jesus calls these last day people to live in such a way that they are keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And you know how I've really centered on this since you've known me? Because a lot of times you, from Adventist preaching and from Adventist congregations, you don't really talk so much about the faith of Jesus, but the commandments are important. We know that in the last days, well, the way it was in the days of Jesus, what was important? To accept the Messiah. Because nobody in the church was accepting the Messiah. What is important today? The seven billion people in the world were told. There's at least one billion, according to the Roman Catholic Church, they have one billion members. But that just takes in whole populations in countries where they're the only church going. Well, let's assume they're right. Then there's maybe another billion or close to it of other Christians so maybe there's 2 billion out of the 7 billion Christians in the world overall. And in other words, they call themselves that. But do they really believe in Jesus, you see? And so we know that what you believe does matter. So let me pray, and then I'm going to read this to you for the most part, and then I'll have some closing remarks. And uh, let me just start with prayer. Father in heaven, Bless me now as I speak these words. So as we hear them, we'll know the call we need to bring to others as well. And let us believe it with all our hearts. I pray in your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. Amen. One more prayer. And let me pray for my brother Mort, who's preaching the same sermon up at Griffin, just to alleviate the technology part, and also so he can just speak it personally. Because he believes it. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So when I wrote the letter for the email, then I had to post on my blog. And what I did was I just took, well, let me just write that letter to my blog. Because I, I need to post at least once a week or people don't read it. And people don't read it anyway unless you're posting every day. And I try to post once or twice a week. Uh, now, none of you know much about that because you don't do much with technology. I'm talking about Facebook you know, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and blogs. Blogs are way back old, but blogs are not 
you know, like social media, blogs are just one person writing something or showing pictures of something that people are interested in, like maybe photography or machine work or, or building wood materials, and, they, and they'll, they'll write on how to do that. And people follow those things by the millions. And so I have a religious blog, and it's called Pastor Dean Living the Faith of Jesus. And so that's my vision. No, I don't live it perfectly, but it's the dream. So the mission is learning the faith of Jesus, and the vision is living the faith of Jesus. Aren't we all learning the faith of Jesus? Isn't that what we claim to be as Seventh-day Adventists, or at least I'm trying to teach you that? Well, then the vision would be, when have we finally arrived that we're actually living it? Well, shouldn't we be living it a little bit better each day? The Bible says go from faith to faith. That's the whole idea between mission and vision. So I want you, I want to share my mission and vision with you so you can have a similar mission and vision and know that, yeah, I'm not perfect yet, but it's what I want to be. Like when you talk to your children, grandchildren, friends, whatever, you know. So this is a conversation. You can share this with other Christians and you can share this with people to spark conversation between you and them. And maybe even bring me in a conversation if they, if they want. I'm not against that. Bring them to church or invite me over to your house and we'll have a small group together and, and we'll pray together. Um, the title of the sermon is From Easter to Origins, What Do You Believe? John 8, 31 and 32 says this. Let me focus my camera here a little bit better first. Here we go. John 8, verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, by the time I posted this, I wrote, I suppose a better greeting would be good afternoon, because the afternoon was waning. That was Tuesday. Today is shaping up. Tuesday, to be a much warmer than the past few days, and I'm thankful for that. Of course, if you lived elsewhere, like in Oregon, they received the first ever measurable snowfall in April, and that was just Monday. First ever. There's a storm system out there that is threatening to bring strong tornadoes and baseball, how big is that? Baseball-sized hail, in the Mississippi Valley and the lower plains, while in the northern plains, they're going to get dumped on with three feet of snow. Now, I wrote this Tuesday, and by Tuesday night, they had been dumped on. Wednesday morning, blizzard conditions in North Dakota, but I digress because that's not what I wrote, but that's what happened. It, it happened. This severe weather is happening in spring. Really? Well, it's not the first time that our country has seen such things. Friends of mine, you know them, the Hills, who now live in Michigan, have recently shared about the colder weather and the snow that they received in April. Meanwhile, here in the heart of Georgia, we are dealing with extreme pollen conditions, as can be evidenced by some of us who are a little on the sensitive side to that. And the weather last week or so was not the nicest. With quite a few of the surrounding counties under tornado watches and severe weather alerts. And when the rain was gone, the opposite of wet conditions became dry conditions with humidities of less than 25%. You know when they send you that warning on the weather app that says, don't burn today because you could start a huge fire. That's our earth. Well, here, what will heaven be like? Perfect weather all the time. And no more wars. And no more pandemics. No more pestilences. No more diseases. And we can praise God for what good things we are promised when heaven comes. Can we not? And we can also praise God that he always provides for us to navigate the difficulties of life on this earth 
He has not left us alone. In fact, Jesus came to this earth and immersed himself in our troublous situation. Why? So that he might deliver us from sin and from evil and from falsehoods and from lies. Can you say hallelujah with me on that one? Amen. Oh, how I look forward to heaven. Amen. As a pastor, I care about people. I especially care that they should be able to know the truth as Jesus had also hoped. Jesus said the reason, the reason that he came to earth was all about testifying to the truth. And this in a conversation with none other than Pontius Pilate, who in the next few moments would give the permission and the order to crucify Jesus. Here is the record of the conversation. If you want to open your Bibles to John chapter 18, I'm going to read verses 33 through 38. It's the record of the conversation, the short part. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would, what does it say? Fight. My servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I Read it with me, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to him, I find no fault in him at all. Let's change scenes a little bit. Amen. Dean reads commentary. What? Really? Pilate questioned Jesus about the accusations against him. Pilate learned that Jesus was a king, but not of this world. Pilate heard. He heard Jesus state his purpose for coming into the world. What did Jesus say? that I should bear witness to the truth. Then, what did Pilate do next? Then, Pilate rejected that truth as if truth was not something to be grasped. Yet, Pilate admitted to the Jews that he found no fault in Jesus at all. What? No fault at all. And still, he gave the order and the permission to crucify Jesus. What do you think? Many people today might agree with Pilate's careless answer to Jesus. What is truth? Many people, like Pilate, also believe that truth is not tangible, not something to be grasped. But Jesus affirmed that truth was something to be grasped. Do you believe that? I know you do. It's all right. You can say something. 
Jesus affirmed that truth was something that people can actually find. Jesus actually taught that it was knowledge of the truth that could and would make a person free. Yet, there is a condition. Jesus tied anyone's ability to know the truth to a knowledge of his word. In fact, he went further. Jesus gave this promise solely to those who had believed in him. Jesus said to those who believed in him, if you abide in my word, then, let me say it again, if you abide in my word, then, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In mathematics, we call that a conditional statement. If, then. Are you one of those who believe in Jesus, especially at the Easter season? There are many who will come to worship at various churches around the world, but how many of those worshipers actually believe in Jesus enough to what? To abide in his word. For I know that there are many Christians who also believe in evolution, as if they do not believe that God created the world in six literal days and rested on the seventh day as Genesis chapters 1 and 2 portray. Well, this is where you come in, especially here, who do believe that. Because you can say like I say to people like that, other Christians. I would like to give a challenge to you. If you are one of those Christians who, that also believes in evolution, like I used to be, I was one of those Christians. Where would I be if my friend didn't invite me to hear a different world view? And to come and see, can the scriptures be trusted? Where would I be? There's many people out there like that today who think they're okay the way they are. Believing in both the Easter story, but not really in the creation story or the flood story. You understand? So I would like to challenge them. The same God that you worship at the Easter season because Jesus went to the cross and died for your sins, this same God also claims to have made the world in six days and rested on the seventh. Now, here's a side note. What other evidence is there out there of why we have a seven-day week? You can use that. This God who has testified to the truth wants you to have an intelligent faith. Is there evidence from science that would support the creation account in Genesis, or even the flood narrative as is written in Genesis chapters six through nine. And what about the evidence from scripture that Jesus fully believed in the literal creation narrative as it is written in Genesis? He believed in the creation account. What about the evidence from scripture that he believed it wasn't a myth, that he believed it's factual and true. If you would like to investigate the truth and be made free, then consider joining me in an investigation in this upcoming seminar called Origins, written by Dr. Stan Hudson and presented throughout the year at various locations. But I will be giving a presentation of Origins beginning on May 13th at the church where I serve as pastor, one of them. And I'm going to do six presentations. First three are the weekend of May 13th and 14th, and the final three the weekend of May 2021. 20, Friday night at 7 p.m., Sabbath morning at the church hour, which you'll see here for church. You'll see the service. And then that afternoon. And by the way, if you want to come to Griffin yourself, you're invited. You can come there that day, or you can come here. But we're going to try to work it out so it'll be working Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sabbath at church. 
And you can invite people. If you're coming here, you can invite people to come here to hear it. That's the plan. But I'm going to need help with that. Because if there's not anybody here to man the TV or man the computer, and you bring someone, then how are they going to be able to interact? You know, you know what I mean? So I said this. I said, also, please consider inviting a friend who may be questioning whether or not he or she can trust the Bible. And the Zoom link, anywhere in the world, they can watch this presentation. Why? Because, like I told you in my opening remarks in the call to worship, people need to hear a different story than the world has been teaching. People need to be introduced to a different world view, a proper biblical world view. That will help them to understand the truth. And people need to understand the truth that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day as surely as they also understand the truth that Jesus was crucified for their sins. What do you say to that? Will you pray about this? I thank you. And then on my blog, there's a link to the website originseminar.org slash griffin, where anyone can sign up. But that's also going to be in the emails I send out. I sign all my letters, as you know, grace and peace, Pastor Dean. So that's it, folks. Our closing hymn is maybe new to us, but it's precious, number 140. That's in the area of the, thou dost leave thy throne, the area of the, all the Christmas hymns, isn't it? It's five verses. I'll just let you remain seated to sing this. But it speaks to what Jesus has done historically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming thy royal degree. But of lowly birth didst thou come to earth, and in greatest humility. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The foxes found rest and the birds their nest in the shade of the forest tree. But thy couch was sod, O oh, the Son of God, in the deserts of Galilee. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. Verse 4. Thou camest, O Lord, with the living word that shall set thy people free. But with mocking scorn and with crown of thorn they bore thee to Calvary. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. When the heavens shall ring and the angels sing at thy coming to victory, 
Let thy voice call me home, saying, yet there is room, there is room at my side for thee. My heart shall rejoice, Lord Jesus, when thou comest and callest for me. Bow your heads for the benediction. Father in heaven, thank you so much for our service today. Lord, help us. We can't do this alone. Convince our people, Lord, who are also members of this church, but have stopped attending some years ago. Convince them, Lord, of their need to be here, to worship with your people, and to be equipped and educated so that we may go forth and spread the good news of the everlasting gospel. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.